Hey guys, this is my second attempt on this. Hopefully this time this works. Okay, so uh, today's uh, lesson is about slope of secants and tangents with limits. So if you guys recall for this unit, what we have been looking at, we've been looking at the limit as x approaches a number, what's happening to the y value. And so what's happening to the output, right? What's my output as x is approaching a certain value from the left and from the right? Now, if you guys recall that when we are looking, when we were looking at MHF for you for um, the limit, or sorry, for the instantaneous rate of change, we looked at what is happening to the slope of the line as the point approaches another point. And this is basically what's going to bring us to the slope of secant and tangents with limit. Okay, but first thing, let's look at what is the slope of the equation for straight lines. Okay, so let's recall these things. So um, first of all, we know that the uh, slope is m equals to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, or you could have remembered it as rise over 1, the difference between the y values um, divided by the difference between the x values. Um, if we're going to look at uh, function notation, that's going to be the function of uh, x2 minus the function uh, x1 divided by x2 minus x1. All right, so now we're going to look at the how is the rate of change of a straight line different from the rate of change of a curve. So I want you to think for a second and then remember how were they different. So if you remember that straight lines had or have constant rate of change. Right? So if you recall a straight line, if I take the slope at this point, the slope between this point and this point, or between this point and this point, I'm going to end up with the same slope. So that means they have a constant rate of change. However, if I have a curve, right, the rate of change or the slope at certain points, which we, in MHF4U, we determined that the slope and the rate of change are the same thing, right, except one has units. Now, uh, if we're looking at this, right, they have different slopes. So uh, curves have changing slopes. All right. So now I want you to think back again to MHF for you and think about what was the difference between the average rate of change and the instantaneous rate of change, instantaneous rate of change. Um, and remember that if we had a curve, right, and let's say we have two points and we're looking for the average rate of change, right? So we're looking for the slope of the line that that these two points uh, make, right? So that will be the slope of what we call the secant line, okay? So this is your secant line. And then the average rate of change is the slope of that secant line, which is the A rock. Right, and if you remember what we did is we did f at the second point, so that's y2 minus the function at the first point, which is y1 over 0.2 minus x2 minus x1, which is a. Okay, so just let's uh, let's write these points here on the graph. So if this is point a, y is f at a, right? Uh, this is point b right here, and then y is f at b. Right? And then we can do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, And this is when I have the, um, the domain, uh, domain of AB 
or in other notation you can write it as a is less than or equal to b okay all right now um however for the instantaneous rate of change we said that it's the slope of the line at one point on the graph but then we determined that there's no way right we can draw a line with only one point because the line could be um could be in any direction right if i have one point right my line could be like this could be like this as long as it's passing through this this line at this point it could be like this it could be like this so i need two points to be able to determine the direction of my slope right at the direction of my line so if i have a curve and i want to determine the instantaneous rate of change at this point right i need another point that's very 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 close to it right where i can draw the line passing three through these two points and then if you guys recall if that point was four then we took like 4.001 right where the second point is just 0 0.001 away from it and we said that in this case we are not determining but we are estimating by using points that are very close to the point given However, in calculus and vectors, now we're not going to estimate anymore. We're going to determine, we're going to find the slope of the tangent line or the instantaneous rate of change. Okay, so uh, with the slope of that um, tangent line is what we call the instantaneous rate of change and is determined by f at a plus h minus f at a divided by a plus h minus a and then you recall that we end up with f at a plus h and then minus f at a divided by h where h is going to be as close to zero as possible okay and this is where the limit comes in right we're looking at the limit when h approaches zero okay so i'm going to change this formula and I am going to change it to say the limit as h approaches 0. Okay, so now you're going to see that this formula is actually the limit. Sorry, I shouldn't put the equal sign there. It's the first thing I told you not to do. So that is the limit as h approaches 0 for this. But as you guys probably notice right now, if I go ahead and I plug in h is zero right i have i will have a zero in the denominator which is not good because then that's undetermined or undefined and that means i have to do something about it and then what we have learned in the previous lesson is that that something is to try to simplify all right so remember this remember where x is approaching where x is a right so let's say this point here is a right i'm trying to find the slope of the tension so here is the um, the graph, uh, sorry, the first question. Uh, determine the slope of the tangent line um, for this rational function, f of x equals five plus x over x squared at x equals five. So you remember now, you see now that the, the, the word has changed to determine, not estimate. So, that means I need to find exactly what it is, okay? So we're looking at the tangent line, so that's the instantaneous rate of change. So I'm looking at the slope of the tangent line or the instantaneous rate of change. And A is equal to 5, right? At X equals 5, where, where that's, that's basically A, okay? So I'm looking at the limit as h approaches zero, right? Remember, we're always looking at when the difference between the two points is zero. For f at five plus h minus f at five divided by h. So what I'm trying to figure out, I need to figure out what f at a plus h is and what, sorry, f at <clears throat> five plus h is. And I want to figure out what f at 5 is, 
okay i'm gonna put it all together okay you can do them separately if you want and plug them into the equation or you can put it all together okay so i'm gonna show you how to put it all together so that's going to be equal to the limit as h approaches zero i am going to plug in five plus h in for x okay so i have five plus h let me erase that for a second so i have five plus and then I replace x with five plus h and divided by instead of x squared we're gonna have five plus h squared minus so i'm going to replace now um x with five so i have five plus five over five squared and then technically if you guys remember that we have we have to divide by uh by by h right so we have to divide by h but um in this case instead of writing divided by h what i'm going to do just to make it a little bit looking simpler i'm gonna write multiplied by one over h that's the same thing i just want you to focus on on um whatever i ha have in the bracket for a moment so i have the limit as h approaches zero now we're going to simplify and find common denominators because we're subtracting fractions so i have 10 plus h over if i expand that one that's going to be um 25 plus 10 h plus h squared and uh, if you guys recall this is you can do like a plus b times a plus b right when you have a plus b squared or you can do the um use the perfect squared formula which is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared right and this is what i did to quickly expand this <coughs> minus 5 plus 5 is 10 divided by 25 i am going to simplify that then over 25 just so i don't have to deal with big numbers i can divide both of them by 5 okay and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find common denominator and basically my common denominator here is to multiply this by 5 and I'm going to multiply this by this whole quadratic, okay? Um, so my common denominator is going to be five times the 25 plus 10 H plus h squared and then for the numerator i'm going to multiply this by 5 and i'm going to multiply this by 25 plus 10 h plus h squared and then don't forget that we're multiplying by 1 over h so now i am going okay let's leave it like this for now okay so let's simplify the numerator what we have here is we have the limit again as h approaches zero don't be um don't forget to write that limit every single time okay it is needed you need to write it so that's 50 plus 5h minus and i'm gonna multiply that negative 2 in so that's going to be negative 50 minus 20h um, minus h squared all divided by sorry that's minus 2h squared all divided by 5 i'm gonna multiply that h in okay so it's gonna be 5h and then 25 plus 10h plus h squared as you guys can see i still can't plug in h equals zero because if once i do that this is gonna go to zero which means the whole denominator is gonna be zero and that is going to give me undetermined so i can't do that yet all right, let's see how we're going to simplify that. So we have the limit as h approaches 0, the 50 and the negative 50, they cancel each other. I can add the 5h and then minus 20h. So that's going to be negative 15h minus 2h squared over 5h. And then I can leave that like 
this, that's fine. Now you see that I can factor out an H from the numerator, okay? So if you look at this H right here, they both have an H, so I can factor that out. And then I'll have negative 15 minus 2H all over 5H, 25 plus 10H plus H squared. And now, look at this beauty. The H and the H cancel each other. And now I am safe to put in zero. Okay, so now I'm going to just not write the limit anymore because I'm going to plug in zero. And I'll have negative 15 minus 2 times zero over um, 25 plus 10 times zero plus zero squared. So that is going to be zero, zero, zero. So I'm gonna end up with negative 15 over 25, which can be simplified to negative three over five. And that is the slope, uh, that is the slope of the, I am missing something because look at this. I forgot that I have a five outside, right? So that is going to be five times 25, which is 125. So this is because I skipped step, eh? Um, so what I have here is negative 15 over 125, which if I divide by 5, I'll get negative 3 over 25, okay? And then you guys can see that this is basically what the slope of the tangent line at x equals 5, okay? So you see that... This is the exact value. This is not the estimate. This is the exact value of the slope of the, that line.